Hey guys, welcome to another episode. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Excel Solver to figure out multiple variables for your models. Hey guys, my name is Dobry, and in this video, we're looking at the free plugin that comes in Excel. You just have to activate it and you can use it kind of like GoSeek on steroids. If you remember, we did a video about GoSeek, I'm gonna link it up here, here or here. GoSeek allows you to have a specific target for a specific uh, calculated cell and then adjust one input to get to this value. The problem with GoSeek is that as soon as you get into a modeling, you have those uh, scenarios where you need to adjust multiple variables that are interlinked somehow. And uh, you need to figure out, let's say, how to maximize profit, but uh, there's no way to do it with GoSeek. Solver can help us uh, with that and it can do so much more, but that's the main thing I've been using it for is uh, maximizing results in my models. By the way, the free Magnimetrics beta is still open if you want to try it, the first link in the description below. Some of you have noticed that recently in my videos I've been using this tab in Excel called Minty Tools and uh, it keeps changing because it's actually a, an add-in that I'm developing for Excel. It's supposed to make it much easier for you to do repetitive tasks in relation to like building financial models, standardizing the way uh, your Excel files look uh, and things like that. It's supposed to come out pretty soon. So uh, if you wanna be in the loop for that, just head over to mintyanalyst.com and leave your email there. Before we open Excel, if you enjoy the content, thumbs up will be awesome. Awesome, and a sub to the channel will be amazing. Okay, let's open Excel and dive straight in. Here in Excel, and I have this product mix. So I have four products, a specific volume that we're producing, the labor cost, the material cost, sales price, and I'm calculating gross profit. And uh, this is actually the most common problem where you might see uh, people using Solver. The idea is uh, how do we maximize gross profit given this product mix and uh, some constraints. But uh, first things first, so if you go to the data tab, you can see that I have my Solver here, but it's not here by default. It comes with Excel, but it's not enabled by default. So you can either go to file, options, then go to add-ins, manage Excel add-ins, and just make sure that you have Solver add-in selected. Hit OK and it's gonna show up here, or if you have the developer tab, you can just go to the developer tab, Excel add-ins, and here it is. Now that I have it here, let's go ahead and uh, fire it up. Make those a bit smaller and Solver. This is the dialog window and it looks kind of overwhelming at first and I think that's the reason why a lot of people never use it. But uh, it's actually quite simple, especially if you want to do like uh, more simplistic scenarios. So the first thing is the objective. This is, um, this is what you want to achieve. What we want is I'm just going to grab this cell here. What we want to do with it is we want to maximize it. You can look at ways to minimize things. Let's say if you have a complex like costs calculation, you can look to minimize it. Or if you want to hit a certain value, you can hit a certain value. Let's say you want to maximize it. And uh, the way we want to maximize it is by switching the product mix. So I'm going to go here, changing variable cells. And this is the difference with GoSeq. So in GoSeq, we can only select one cell to change. And here I can just go ahead and grab all four cells. The next thing uh, we need to do, and uh, this is where the fun part begins, is to add some constraints. So we want to set this to the maximum possible by changing those four, but subject to the constraints. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add. The way add constraints work is the cell reference, my total, I want it to be below or equal to, and you have different options here and you can either type in a number here or you can just grab the 5,000 that we have here for maximum production capacity. Click add, it's gonna add it and leave this window again up to the point where you're done. The next thing we want this to be below 2,000. I'm just gonna select it, press tab twice to go to the constraint, 2,000 add the second product, 2,000 add the third product, select the 2,000 add, and then the four product, 1,000 add, and uh, yeah, because I added it now, okay, says that I have an issue, but uh, don't worry, if you press cancel, 
your constraints are still here. A cool thing here is that you can load and save your uh, scenarios, uh, the, the parameters for solver. So if you plan to working in the same uh, project a lot, you can just save those and then reuse them. Make sure that you don't change the structure of the file because then once you load a saved version, your references will be invalid. This check mark would make sure that there are no uh, negative numbers and I pretty much always leave this on, just the nature of the problems that I use Solver for. The next thing here is the solving method and uh, there's some explanation here. So uh, GRG nonlinear, you also have simplex LP for linear problems and evolutionaries for non-smooth nonlinear problems. I think I always leave this one and it's been working fine for me so far. Let's go ahead and hit solve. It's gonna show a new window and uh, you see that it updated the numbers here. Currently it suggests that we stop producing XYZ and maximize profit by producing the maximum possible capacity of the first and the third product and then go with the fourth product up until we fill the maximum production capacity. So you can save the scenario, click OK to return or you can just click OK and accept the changes or you can just go restore to original values. I'm gonna keep those, hit OK and uh, that's it. Imagine doing this with like a larger number of products with more cost elements. It's gonna save you a ton of time and uh, it would help you quickly figure out, like in this case, this product makes no sense for us to develop and sell so you can just focus on the other three. The second example that I want to look at, so we have like a simple production model. We have our production volume, which is based off of our employees, hours worked per employee, the hourly production volume per employee. This gives us the produced volumes. We then have the labor cost, the material cost per unit, uh, some overheads, the total cost. We're selling the same volume, sales and gross profit. So what we want to do here is we want to maximize gross profit. Let me pull up Solver again. We want to be working with our objective will be our gross profit. The things we want to be changing are the hours worked per employee. And if you press control and hold it, you can select different cells individually or you can use your separator. It's comma for me to separate them here. I'm also going to change the hourly volume and I'm going to change the material cost per unit. Next thing, we're gonna add the constraints here. Click add, let's start. So the first thing, hours work per employee, it has to be below or equal to 168. That's the total number of hours in a month. I also want the same thing, hours work per employee, to be above or equal to 84 because I'm not allowed to hire employees for uh, less hours than that per month. Click add. I want to make sure that our material costs per unit are below or equal to 55 and I want to make sure that they're above or equal to 50 and we forgot the hourly volume. I want to make sure that it's below or equal to the max hourly volume and I also want to make sure that it's above or equal the minimum volume and uh, we have it here. So we're working with the gross profit by changing those three, the hours work, the hourly volume and the material costs. And we have the constraints here. So if we just click solve, let's just keep it. You see that uh, solver immediately went to maximum hours, maximum uh, hourly volume output, minimum cost and uh, this led us to um, the, the highest possible gross profit of 160,000. That's pretty straightforward. If we can actually control all of those variables, that's the way to go. Now let's look at the same example, but uh, here the volume would actually lead to additional costs. So the only change here is that the rent is not flat. We have a base rent and then for each unit above 5,000 produced units, we need to pay an additional 15 per month for storage. If we run our solver here and you see that I've already pre-selected everything. So you have the gross profit here. We want it to be maximized. We have the cells to change the same cells and we have our constraints here, which uh, relate to the 
hourly volume, the hours worked per employee, and the material cost per unit set up the same way as we had in the previous example. So if we run it now, you see that we maximize at uh, 106,000, pretty much doing the same thing. The more hours our employees work, the, the more gross profit uh, we make. And it doesn't matter that we're paying more rent, we're still generating more money. But what happens if we change our storage rent per unit, about 5,000 units? So let's say this is 25. Then if we run Solver, you see that now Solver adjusts the hours worked per employee and brings them down to 98 to make sure that we're not producing more than 5,000 units because now it's too expensive to store those additional units. That's pretty much the type of problems that I've been using Solver for when I have relations between different inputs for a model and I wanna make sure that I'm using the best combination of those inputs that would maximize the result. So that's pretty much how you can use Solver to, um, to solve more complex versions of a GoSeq problem. And uh, as soon as you start trying it out within your actual models, you're gonna see that you can do so much with it. And uh, for me, it's been really helpful to sort of like maximize the output. Gotta say that's the most common scenario where I would uh, use Solver as um, just want to maximize result. A reminder, go to mintianalyst.com, leave your email and be on the lookout for uh, the Minty Tools plugin once it comes out. Thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. <clears throat> in this video, show you Excel Solver. Um, to um, show uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> just a reminder um, in this video 